Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Crispin Sachikonya sitting in for charity. Here are your top stories this Monday. Firstly, some news just in. A third South African man has been found guilty of the 2010 killing of Swedish woman Annie Dewani on her honeymoon. Tholile Mgeni was convicted of murder by a judge in Cape Town. His co-accused have said they shot dead Mrs. Dewani on the orders of her husband, Shrian Dewani, who is from the English city of Bristol. Mr. Dewani denies plotting to kill his wife. A British court has, ex has halted his extradition, citing his mental health. More on the story as and when we get it. Dynamo's Football Club have won the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League. The team from Harare secured a one-all draw against Hardbody, which was enough to edge out their great rivals, Highlanders of Bloeo. Highlanders, for their part, beat Blue Rangers by two goals to nil, but Dynamo's superior goal difference meant they hung on for their second successive league win. The Premier League trophy was flown in by an Air Force helicopter, which was on standby, ready to fly to Sakuva or Ascot at the full-time whistle. Dynamo's coach, Kalisto Pasua, praised his side and his rivals, saying, we won the championship through concentration because Highlanders were really strong all the way. We have John, a Dynamos fan, joining us on the line from South Africa. So John, what did you make of the Dynamos victory? Yeah, the thing is, uh, Dynamos have been doing very well for the past uh, three, two seasons, in fact, because last season they won it, now they retain it. It shows that uh, they are the champions and uh, nobody can beat them at this stage. And other thing, if you can check on the uh, uh, goals they consider, they consider less goals than any other team. And what about Highlanders? They fought hard, didn't they? See, Highlanders, of course, they had, uh, they were been playing very well, but at some point they were lacking uh, I don't know what is it. Is it uh, uh, the, the 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 courage or something? Because always they were trailing uh, behind uh, Dynamos. It also shows that uh, they were not gonna win the league. Dynamos gonna take it uh, and control. Yeah, they they were been trying to push closely, but uh, uh, Dynamos. To, to to be honest with you. Once it leaves on the second uh, second round of the league, then you know that Dynamo is going to win the league. Two Zimbabwean students have been cleared of raping two teenage girls in Chester, England. Simbarashe Makondore and Sipo Siamufinya said they had forgiven their 15-year-old accusers after a trial lasting a week at the Chester Crown Court. Makondore and Siamufinya, both 22, knelt in silent prayer following the acquittal. Makundere said they wanted to forgive the girls, and Siamfinya echoed this, saying he wanted to forgive and forget. It had been alleged that on October 22nd last year, the two men had met the teenage girls in Chester before exchanging numbers and agreeing to meet at a party later on. The girls claimed they were raped by the men that night. It took just over seven hours for the jury to find the two men not guilty. In Chisamba, Zambia, a 24-year-old woman has been brutally murdered in unexplained circumstances. Her attackers cut off all her limbs, removed her teeth, before setting her house ablaze. The deceased, identified as Sharon by her sister Priska Kasembe, had legs and hands severed. Police confirmed the incident yesterday and believe that the murder could be a ritual killing. This murder is similar to that of student Ruth Mbandu, reported on ATV News some time ago, who also had some parts of her body removed. Police said the man in which Sharon was murdered was strange because some parts of the body were missing and that initial investigations linked some foreigners to the killing. In entertainment news, Zimbabwean celebrity Rocky Josfetz has signed a two-year deal with Sunshine Studios in Harare. Rocky is excited about the two-year project in which he will record three albums. 
the former Big Brother Africa housemate, will work with one of Zimbabwe's legendary music producer, Keith Foxen. Rocky, who confesses to be in a good place in life and very happy and free, says he believes that Sunshine Studios will help him achieve his dream of traveling internationally. Here's a clip of Rocky in action. Well, it was a surprising weekend in the English Premier League, and our football expert Liam Thorpe joins me now in the studio. So, Liam, plenty of surprises in the Premier League. That's right, Crispin. It was a very, very surprising weekend in the English Premier League. Manchester United, perhaps the biggest surprise of the lot. They unexpectedly lost 1 0 to strugglers Norwich. The Red Devils never really got going in this game, and too many key players failed to show up on the day. I'm sure that boss Sir Alex Ferguson will have been absolutely furious with the manner of this performance and they lose their top place in the Premier League. They weren't the only giants to fall as European champions Chelsea were defeated 2-1 by this season's surprise package West Bromwich Albion. West Brom took the lead through Shane Long before Chelsea's Eden Hazard pulled them level. But West Brom were too good for the London side with Peter Odenwingy scoring the winner. West Brom fans must be absolutely delighted as their team now move up to fourth place just one spot behind Chelsea themselves. Surely even the most optimistic Brom fan could not have predicted this. Well, with Manchester United and Chelsea both losing, this was surely the perfect opportunity for the champions, Manchester City, to take full advantage, and they did precisely that. They thumped a very poor Aston Villa side 5-0 at the Etihad Stadium, with two goals each for Argentinian strikers Carlos Tevez and Sergio Aguero, with David Silva tapping in one as well. Aston Villa, for their part, were angry as a penalty was given for handball when replays clearly showed that the ball never came anywhere near contact with the Aston Villa player. Still, it didn't make much, much change to the result. On Friday, myself and Michael talked about the North London derby between Arsenal and Spurs. We both agreed that there would be plenty of goals in it, and we were definitely correct. The final result was an emphatic 5-2 victory for Arsenal, but things couldn't have been much different. They could have been much different, sorry. Spurs started better in the game and scored early on through former Arsenal player and Togo international Emmanuel Adebayor. He then became the villain of the piece as he committed a stupid, dangerous foul on Santi Cazorla and was shown a red card. The 10 men of Spurs could not come back and Arsenal's attack was too strong for them with goals from Giroud, Podolski, Cazorla, Mertesaka and Walcott, with Gareth Bale pulling one back for Spurs later on. Wow, what a weekend. So with Man City to off the league, are they now favourites? Well, the thing is, Chris, they've not played well this season at all, Man City, well, compared to their form last season, but it's almost ominous for the rest of the league that, sort of, coming into winter now, they sit on top of the league without having to play well at all, so it's hard for me to say, but I think they're, they're probably the favourites of the league. They're only one point above United at the moment, so it's tough, it's a close one to call, but United and Chelsea are stuttering, so I would place Chelsea just about... Just about third favourites, United second favourites, and I'd probably say yeah. City favourites. Chelsea haven't won in a while, but what do you reckon of them? They have been on a poor run of form. It's, it's interesting, just a few weeks ago, myself and Michael Mamba were talking about how excellent they were playing. Attacking players like, like Oscar and Mata, just absolutely dominating the league, but they've, they've actually had a blip this time of the season, quite a few seasons in a row. It's the sort of winter blues that, that they seem to be suffering from. So. They really need to get back to winning ways, and they might try and do that uh, against Juventus this week. Now, we all know that you're a Man United fan. What went wrong, Liam? Well, I, I watched the game, and I have to say that they just didn't turn up. Norwich are not a side that United should be struggling against. They should be putting three or four goals past them. But it wasn't even a case of you know, Norwich just holding on for dear life. This was Man United not playing football, not having attempts on goal. And it's, you know, I have to say, Norwich deserved their goal. And it, it, the, th the funny thing is, the best chance that United had to score was actually a Norwich player nearly scoring in his own net, and that just shows how bad United really were. And I know you called the Arsenal score. Do you think that flattered the team a bit? Well, I know Mr. my colleague, Mr. Mambo, who's not here today, incidentally, will be very delighted with that. But I think he'd have to be a little bit honest. If, if Adebayo hadn't got sent off, it could have been a completely different picture. Spurs were 1-0 up, he'd scored. They were dominating the play, dominating the midfield. 
And, you know, I'm not saying they would have definitely won, but there's no way it would have been 5 2. When you saw the game in action, it was so obvious that there were holes in the Spurs team purely because they were a man down. And when you've got players for Arsenal like Cathola, Arteta, dominating the midfield, you know, with one man less, it's, it was a, they were fighting a losing battle. But great result for Arsenal, and the fans must have been delighted. What a weekend. Thank you, Liam. No problem. Today's photo of the day comes from Samuel Kundindlovo. Why not send us in your favorite pictures and you could win the title like Samuel. Thanks for watching and have a lovely evening.